Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, do you know how hot professional wrestling is right now? It is so hot. Odyssey Jones actually showed up. <laughs> Seriously. Now, I'm not even joking. It is so hot. It was SummerSlam just put things through the roof. We are talking all about what happened on the biggest party of the summer that actually lived up to its nickname of WrestleMania of the summer. SummerSlam tribal beef happening right now on King's Rings Podcast, episode number 385, exclusively here on Wrestle Attic Radio, and it starts right now. Midnight music. Midnight music. All right, I am so serious. Odyssey Jones legitimately showed up, and I kind of popped. I was like, oh, crap. He's still signed by WWE. Yeah, I saw that, but I didn't know if it was real or not. No, and I guess it, it, I guess it was. It's, it's funny, because last real. week, Ricky, last week we really mentioned, yeah, he got drafted, and they never used him. And then here he yeah, is. Yeah, here he is. Here he is. They, they, it's like, wow. it's like we said his name three times, and then he disappeared. Yeah, and, and now he is back. And he, he lifted both members of AOP up with ease. It was kind of scary. To be completely honest with you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to King's Rings Podcast, episode number 385. I am your host, King Ricky Rose. Thank you for taking your time out of your busy, busy week uh, to, to watch us, listen to us, wherever you are listening to us or watching us right now. We are coming live currently from Facebook, uh, Twitch, and YouTube because Twitter got all high and mighty and is charging us to stream on their stuff. Anywho, um, if you like what you're listening to or watching at the current moment, please like, share, subscribe, leave us a great review or comment whatever you prefer the links to all of that are in the description below with me as always uh this week a man who also enjoys a little bit of chicken nuggies will tarashak how are you dude who doesn't love chicken nuggies i think i saw a meme a few weeks ago it's like we gotta we got stop pretending these are just food for children they got chicken nuggets or adult food um and that hit that hit hard i a still big, i big still buy chicken nuggets. nuggies i'm not gonna lie Oh yeah, I keep, I keep them in the freezer for emergencies all the time. If they're shaped like something, they taste Dinosaur. better. That Dino nuggets, absolutely. Fact. Yes. It's scientific fact. Hey Murphy, tell me how much you love chicken nuggets. What 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 brand do you have in the freezer right now? Is it Tyson? I hope it's Tyson. Um. Well, I'm actually in between nuggets at the moment, but I had Dyson, Tyson last. I'm in between nuggets. I'm in between <laughs> nuggets. What is your <laughs> okay? Okay. What is your nuggie of choice then? Um. Well, no, I. In between nuggets, meaning I just have to go to the store and buy nuggets. I'm not nuggets. Okay. All right. So, yeah. again, my question still stands. Like, what is... Usually, Ty- usually okay. Tyson. But I'm usually always Tyson. Get, I, I also, but I'll get Purdue if they're on sale. Purdue's okay. Yeah. Tyson is just the crunchiness. It's better. It's more processed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will say, since I have, like, a BJ's membership... Uh, the BJ's, like, I think it's, like, Wellesley Farms nuggies. It's like, 10 pounds Wellesley of nuggies. Wellesley Farms is so good. Wellesley Farms is, like, really good, though. Their nuggies are really yeah. good. I, I got to do a BJ's order next week because we're running low on toilet paper and Ooh. paper towels. So you'll have it for another so, year. <laughs> yep, I'll have that for another year. Do it. It's hilarious. We bought trash bags. And last, like last February, here we are in August. We just opened like the second half. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love wholesale. It's so so I many love trash bags. shopping. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. God. I do subscribe and save with Amazon for like okay. toilet paper and paper towels because I like we'll for we'll both forget. Like we'll run low and then we forget and then it's like a shortage. Yeah. So we have one roll sus- left. Ooh. <laughs> and it's a crisis. So. I have a we're ba- we have a, ba- a bathroom closet, so I have like fucking like three cases of toilet paper in my fucking closet right now. Like I'm ready to go. Oh yeah, I hope you're ready to go for the I'll- show too. I'm ready. Yeah, we're gonna get into it right now. We got we we we're gonna talk all about SummerSlam because SummerSlam was literally that damn good. Uh, but first and foremost, we have to talk about NXT because it was revealed over the weekend that NXT will be officially moving. To the CW October 1st. So on October 1st, the CW would, will have the first NXT show. And for essentially, theoretically, the first time ever, NXT is going on the road. Shawn Michaels revealed earlier today that the first show of NXT on the CW is going to be at the Allstate Arena 
in Chicago. Oh, shit. Okay. So CM Punk's going to be on NXT. Shawn Michaels also confirmed that CM Punk is going to be on the first show of NXT from the CW. Wow. I'm going to watch NXT again. <laughs> it was all. It's still on Still on Tuesdays? Still on Tuesdays. All right, cool. Good. That's good. Yeah. I like that. It was also confirmed by Shawn Michaels and also with a press release from WWE that the second show on the 8th of October is going to be in St. Louis with, yes, an appearance from Randy Orton. That second show is also very important because AEW got bumped to Tuesday that week. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> That's not good. Bumped yeah. bump for what? What bumped them? I honestly don't freaking know. <laughs> um, Hockey? No. I don't think hockey starts that early just yet. Um, I don't. I honestly don't know, but the rumor is that AEW is going to be going on Tuesday that week. Um, mm. So Shawn Michaels revealed that they're doing All State Arena in Chicago and whatever arena. Oh, it might be a debate. You're right because it is an election year. Um, and oh. and they get, is the debate going to be on TNT? Like what the fuck is this? TBS. Remember they don't they don't TBS <laughs> going to. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the, the debate debates like primetime, like AB, no, it's like, usually the uh, primetime CNN, networks, Fox, yeah. ABC, MSNBC. So I, won't be on TV. So I don't know exactly what's bumping them or what they're moving it around for, but who knows? Uh, but we have two. We have we have two essentially Raw and SmackDown arenas historically now getting NXT. Those are the only two dates and locations they revealed. Do we see this will as a continuous thing? You know, it might be might, might be playoff baseball. That also could do that if it's in October. Yeah, yeah, it's probably it's probably a uh, baseball. What, what was the question? Do, does, is this going to be like a continuous thing? Like, are they going to continue to do touring? Yeah. Um, probably. I mean, it depends. I don't. It's not going to be like bigger arenas like the Allstate. It'll if they're smart, they'll probably do small arenas like college arenas. Well, like all states, could, like, all states arena, we saw Survivor Series, and that's not a big arena. That's yeah. a small arena. It's, it's 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 a smaller arena. Yeah. Like they could do Nassau Coliseum, absolutely, probably. as long as it's still there. Yeah, uh, the, the Hartford, they could do that. Where we, where we saw Money in the Bank, they could do that kind of a stadium, mm-hmm. or, or say stadium arena. Um, I don't see them doing the big ones like a like a TD Garden or um, MSG. even like a, a, a no, I think- MSG. Or like oh like a Brooklyn yeah or like a Staples Center but they could do um what's the is the Cow Palace in San Francisco is that still a thing yes yeah they could they could they could still sell Corpus Christi in few, in four minutes please yeah right <laughs> um but yeah I think I think it's worth experimenting just give it give it three to four months mm-hmm. give it some time and if it doesn't work you can always go back to full sale like yeah because NXT NXT um. TV never tore, but the the, the 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 takeovers did, and they had the pre-taping for NXT yeah. during the takeovers. So, it's it's a good step for them. It's a good step up. Um, NXT is a, is is on the up and up again. It's been on the right path for a while. So I'm excited to see what happens with them. Yeah, good for them. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. Uh, uh, kayfabe, would you go to an NXT live event if it toured in your city? Honestly, yeah. I've never been to an NXT event, period. Fair. So Wait, would, you never went to TakeOver? Never, really? No. What? Never. I know. It's Vicky, really we, sad. We, we failed. We, we both failed. We K did fail friends. you on that. We I'm so you. sorry. This is our fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is really our um, fault. Holy crap. Like, yeah. Not just your fault. It just was never in the cards for me. Like, I can never get off of work for all the events and stuff. Like I can now. Yeah. Boris! <laughs> CM Pop <laughs> has returned. Yes, he has. <laughs> I'm re- yeah, we need to get you to an NXT event. I always wanted to go. I would um, go, for sure. I always wanted to go to Full Sail, like the original NXT, and I was. I, Me too. I wasn't able to do it before we switched everything around because I don't think they're at Full Sail at all. Well, I think they're the PC completely. Yes. Yeah, they, they broke That's away right. from full. Yeah, they are they are not in full sale anymore. Yeah, right. they're they're they just pretty much took whatever part of the warehouse and PC and just made it an arena, which is also just the ingenuity to do that is absolutely bonkers. Um, yeah. So yeah, but no, NXT is on the move. The CW is the most, uh, not the most watched, but more people have access to the CW than any other network in in America. So there are going to be yeah. eyes on this product. 
And so, SmackDown was on CW way back when. When it used to be called mm-hmm. UPN, yes. Yeah, I think in 08, 09, they were also, before they went to sci-fi, yeah. they were on the CW. That's when, that's when I first started watching SmackDown, mm-hmm. when they were on the CW. Yeah, so we have NXT on the move on October 1st. SmackDown is going to USA on September 13th, Friday the 13th, which is hysterical. Uh, so there's a lot of there's going to be a lot of television movement in the next couple of months for uh, for the WWE uh, products. Uh, speaking of movements and everything like that, when UPN had all the black shows, that's right. UPN was an acronym for something else, and I won't say it on the show. <laughs> in in the in the black community. Um, UPN. Oh, eight and oh nine was SmackDown. SmackDown was my network TV. <laughs> God, you're right. It was. My it network also, TV. It also was on my network TV. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God, I forgot about my network. It was on. TV. It was on a CW, my network TV, and then Sci-Fi. Because <laughs> I remember it on UPN specifically. I remember it on UPN. I remember. I remember that's where it debuted. But also on the movie was going to be the announcer. So I don't know if any of you guys watched the pre-show to SummerSlam, but Joe Tessitore made his first appearance um, as part of a WWE announce team. He actually, you can probably look it up well, because I don't know if you've heard, you probably you would hear his voice, but he talked about being from Albany, New York, and skipping school to hang out with, like, Cheap J Strongbow or whatever huh. and stuff like that. Like, he is a, he is a lifelong diehard fan. Um, just from hearing his, like, two-minute banter with him and Cole, I have a lot of faith in Joe Tessitore. Um and it is, and then apparently he's going to be going to Raw, starting September second. It's a little. Oh, he's taking he's taking over for Pat McAfee because Pat McAfee is going to do college football. I don't know about that because Michael Cole announced that Joe Testor is going to be on Raw and Cole is moving to SmackDown. What? Yeah. Just me, Cole Graves and Wade potentially. I don't think I like that. Unless I, I guess they have zero faith in Corey as like a lead announcer, which I thought he was doing fine. No, he's just I mean, he's better. He's better as color. I agree. Don't get me wrong. I agree. Yeah, mm-hmm. but he's perfectly fine as play by play. Yeah, I thought he was doing well. So I don't know. So what, who's me play by play on Raw? Tessator then? I think Tessator and then maybe McAfee. I don't know how we're gonna shake this up. Because McAfee is going back to um, college. College. Yeah, he's still doing game day. So I don't know how the shakeup is going to go, but that is the announcement from Cole. He's going to SmackDown, um, and Joe Tessitore's going to Raw. So it's going to be an interesting shakeup whenever that does occur. Um, but yeah, a lot of faith in Joe Tessitore. But let's get to arguably one of the best Summer Slams of all time. Summer Slam from the most mid of the Midwest places in Cleveland. Um, <laughs> Who would have thought it is. a bump in ass summer slam would have been in Cleveland? Yeah, the most mid of the Midwest in Cleveland. Uh, a um, uh, American, uh, uh, I think an American record for summer slam with like over 54,000 people in attendance. Um, I looked around. They, they essentially got three quarters of the stadium, which is actually wildly impressive compared to when they did Nashville a couple years ago and they only filled up like half. Yeah, it's sold. It's sold fine. Yeah. It's sold fine because I don't think SummerSlam doesn't draw the international crowd like like Mania does. It does not. No. So mm-hmm. think of WrestleMania without like eighty percent of the or ninety percent of the international crowd, and that's what you get for SummerSlam in a stadium. And it checks out. I mean, it and they they shoot it so it looks full, right? Like yeah, they had a good amount of the upper deck blocked off, and all of the upper upper deck blocked off. Not all, but the, they had they had one side of the upper upper deck I think blocked off. Yeah. So it, whatever. Yeah. It was good, but it looked it looked full. I mean, fifty thousand people in the building, including like all their staff and wrestlers and everything. That's that's a that's a, that's a good number. Yeah. It's believable. Yeah. Um, I mean, we'll we'll see. Are they here's, here's the thing, Ricky. Uh, on Friday the eighth or Thursday the eighth, <laughs> WWE has Q two earnings. Oh, which that's is gonna be WrestleMania. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, <but it's laughs> earnings, three earnings. Uh, WrestleMania was in Q three technically because it's April, April, May, June. Yeah. Uh, Giles, yeah. Whatever. So the earnings, earnings is this, this, this week. Goodness so gracious. I'm excited to see that stock price go up. Yeah. Keep me posted on that. Okay. What were your thoughts on on SummerSlam as a whole before we get into the you know play by play? Hello, Boris. By the Summer, way. He's very happy. Boris is very happy to be back. Um, SummerSlam was really, really fun. Um, RIP to my prediction. <laughs> you, but like you were doing better than Will for a second. 
<laughs> Yo, my pictures were ass, dude. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking last okay, week. Okay, so I like went back, I reflected, and like my predictions on matches was pretty like okay. It was the bonus questions that like fucked my shit up. You'd be but surprised. But that's how I know the pay per view was like good because anything I expected to happen or thought might happen didn't really happen. Mm-hmm. I like being surprised. I'm like low key sick of predicting everything. <laughs> I will tell you right now, Kay, uh, as I'm looking at everything at the moment. Yeah, you got the middle of the card. Everybody got two of the bonuses correct. So okay. Someone came back and someone turns on someone. Uh, you will simply got uh, Tiffy not catching in and Roman returning. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Kay, What did yeah. I get? You got Kay, you got Tiffy not cashing in and Roman returning. Mm-hmm. I got. T- yeah, I thought. Yeah. It would be stupid. I got Tiffy not it. cashing in, and I got Dom turning on Rhea. Both of you guys said no. You didn't think Roman was returning? Wait, before? really? <laughs> yeah. Ricky, that was like a free point. I thought it was too soon. I I said it perfectly last week, and I even someone mentioned it on uh, on a meme or online somewhere. Roman came back as the biggest heel in the business in SummerSlam 2020. He comes back as the biggest biggest baby face in the industry. Oh, we'll, 2020 at SummerSlam 24. Oh, we'll we'll talk I about that. Anyway. Yeah, we'll definitely talk but, about that. But also on a logistical standpoint, it's August. His kids are going back to school. He can go back on the road. <laughs> I thought he was going to say after the kids were guaranteed to be in school and then he would leave, but I guess he was like, ah, nope, screw it. Going to leave now. Well, some school, some schools start already. Depends on where the he south lives. Starts, and in the South, like if he's in Florida, kids in probably August. start like next week. The kids are probably at school by now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows what it is? But uh, SummerSlam, crazy, great time. There's some interesting things that I that I caught specifically from Cody. Um, and, they, and they also showed it on the broadcast that WWE rented out a suite just for Legends. The comeback. So you had the Steiners, Nash, X Pac, I think we're all in a specific suite, and they yeah. called it the Legend Suite. So what Cody revealed on the uh, on during the presser after the show. Which was really cool, by the way. I'm very happy that they do this. Oh, so you, you caught the presser too? Yeah, I did yeah. watch the presser. So what Cody revealed I watched it too. Yeah, what Cody revealed on the presser, which I thought was really cool, is that every every talent got in essentially a dossier, uh, but an email say like, hey, these legends are going to be here, and they got a picture of a legend and their accomplishments um, just so that they were all informed about who they were and why they were important to, like, the legacy of WWE so that if they ran into them, they can, like, be somewhat familiar with them. And I thought that was yeah, actually pretty Make freaking sure awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, if Kevin Nash comes back and, like, Odyssey Jones or whatever, fucking the big guy, the uh, tsunami guy, like doesn't shake his hands and we all butthurt about it. Bronson Reed. Mm-hmm. Bronson <laughs> Reed. So yeah, it's good. But I said, imagine Randy Orton opening that email. It's like one, two, three, kid. Who the <laughs> fuck is this? <laughs> like, like, as, but uh, yeah, I, I think I think it's classy, especially. Um, I, they get, get to, even the employees, like the wrestlers, most of the wrestlers. I would say 80% of the wrestlers would know everybody, but someone like a Tiffany Stratton yeah. or even some few people in NXT just like, like the, what's the, the, what's the college MNL thing? What, what, um, NIL. Those, NIL. Yeah. Like those guys, they're going to have no idea. Yeah. They're going to have, they're going to have no idea. So it's very smart. And then even some of the producers, people who work at the staff mm-hmm. production, whatever. Yeah. It's, it's smart. And it's something the uh, legends would appreciate. Yeah. Knowing they're being appreciated and respected. I like how he gave them like a suite in the, in the arena. And I hope that continues for like, yeah. Other events, at least the big, at least the major four or five events that, like, if you're in town, yeah. hey, you can get a suite, you can like sit comfortably and watch this event. You yeah, know? it's very, yeah, it's very fun. much, it's very much creating a healthier and more productive backstage environment. Absolutely. Mm. I wonder if Art Anderson good. got that treatment. I hope he didn't bring a Glock in. Anywho, we can talk about that in a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he didn't tell me to shoot somebody. Yeah. Which is not- well, <laughs> but we can. Netflix. 2025. Yeah, Glock's coming. But the biggest surprise of SummerSlam Look was Jelly Roll photo. with one of the greatest choke slams in the past 20 our years. Truth. <laughs> our truth. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, oh, I was like, I got out of bed and went, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Dude, look at look at look at Jelly Roll's feet. They're on the ground. <laughs> like, the height of Austin Theory. <laughs> I know Austin jumped up there, but 
still, still like, to hold. Art shoot this like holy <laughs> shit. The Miz is like wow. He's like Baba Tunde tall. <laughs> yes, he's like Baba Booey tall. Exactly. He's Baba Tunde. But no, I enjoyed everything about Jelly Roll. His little. I love the fact that the sh- that the song that they chose was Liar, and then like Rhea and Liv um, started the show. Like he yeah. he was a very entertaining like musical guest. Yeah, he was. He, and again, that choke slam. I think I tweeted. I was like, "Sign Jelly Roll now, you cowards!" Like, sign him. <laughs> like choke well, slam alone. Signed. Like, just Mike. Look at the height. Look at how high he is in the air. <laughs> I love it. I, I popped, it. dude. I popped really hard. Like, I was a fan of Jelly Roll before, but I almost bought his album. Even though you don't have to buy albums anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Dory, you didn't miss. We're not on Twitter anymore. Twitter blocked people from streaming unless you sign up for their premium stuff. So now we're on YouTube and uh, Facebook. And YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. You can find us there. But we didn't get into the fun stuff yet. We just had to talk about how great Jelly Roll's performance was, especially with that choke slam event. Damian Priest had to one up him last night on Raw by choke slamming the living daylights out of JD. Did anybody see that? No, not oh, yet. Oh, JD no. took a massive choke slam, but we'll talk about that. Uh, in a segment, let's get to one of the greatest pops ever. Roman Reigns came back and just beat the fuck out of Solo with one punch, making Cody Rhodes undefeated in Bloodline Rules matches, by the way, which is cruel irony <laughs> in and of itself. But let's talk about some Roman Reigns numbers real quick. Roman Reigns garnered about over 100 million views of his return on you, on social media within like a 24-hour period. His, the, the, um, they came out, they, after he returned, they put on WWE Shop a Roman Reigns signature series WWE Championship belt. Okay, they made 1,300... And 16, and 16 of, of them. them. How many? 1,316 of them. K, don't look for it because it's sold out in an, within an hour. I'm not going to buy it. It's You can't. It's That's gross. <laughs> it's sold out within an hour. They were priced at $600 a pop, which means within an hour of Roman's return, he garnered $800,000 for the company. <laughs> Damn. That's, that's disgusting. <laughs> Okay, that's based. Just wait for Q4 earnings. Yeah. <laughs> wait for Q3 earnings. That's based on the belt alone. Who knows how many of the OTC shirts that they that they sold that day? I know Issa bought like two of them because I saw her social media. Oh. Do, I do. I like. I liked when uh, he was coming down. Michael Cole was like, "But who? Who's he gonna side with?" I'm like, "Look at his shirt." What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Reading <laughs> who's comprehension. <laughs> Uh, OTC over the counter. <laughs> I had that ball for a split second. <laughs> Roman, I'm not gonna lie. Roman had a I'm huge like, jack. Oh, original tribal chief. Yeah, Roman had a huge Jackman level return. That's a good one, Charles. <laughs> yeah, he did. That was good. Yeah. So Roman came back to his WrestleMania remix to music, which took me a while to figure out, but the whole crowd knew what it, knew who it was. And yeah, immediately. I was really slow on the music. Not gonna lie. It took I couldn't a while really to hear it. I heard I heard that pop and then the biggest simultaneous ooh yell ever, which was yeah. unbelievable. It was really good. It was, it was kind of funny because um, when the returns were happening, like it was um, where Orton and KO, uh, for a second I was like, <laughs> they're going to get Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Jimmy as I well. Thought they might co- I thought the Usos might come out. I thought so too. Jay was hinting that he might be back soon. Um, but overall, kayfabe, while we're on, what do you, let's talk about the Bloodline Rules match and Return of Roman. Um, I mean, it's what I expected and what I wanted to happen. Uh, I really thought Zilla Fatu was going to show up with him. I didn't think it would just be Roman. Yeah. And I don't know. I thought there would have been more. I thought it would have been longer. I've but re- overall, I was happy with it. Yeah, I, I think they I think he made his point quite well. And he I mean he he beat the crap out of Solo. He then stared down Cody. Like it was great kind of acting by Cody and Roman and them. Like Roman had to stare down. Cody even looked him all the way like to to when Roman walked back to make sure he wasn't coming for him. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> like and stuff. So it appears that we are getting Roman and Cody three somewhere down the road. Roman just has to put his family in order. And that's all that the message was. Roman was like, I'm here to teach them a lesson. And when I'm done teaching them a lesson, I'm coming after Cody. Yeah. And it was perfect. Yeah, it was very the match itself was the weakest on the card, if I'm being honest. It was um funny. Bloodline Rules was great at Mania, but to kind of do that same story and thing again seemed a little like it didn't hit as hard the second time. Yeah. Because you knew you knew what was coming. You knew someone was coming out. Now you're still surprised it's Roman, even though we all knew it was gonna happen, but mm-hmm. and it was still a cool moment. But if Bloodline rules is gonna be the return match, the run in and return match, it's like, well, can we skip to that part then and just not do the rest of the match? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, it's a good build-up. I mean, I, I also hope Jacob Fatu is is all right because he took a yeah, nasty bump. Knee. Yeah, he's in a boot. Yeah, I've seen pictures of him in a and boot. I, I think that was, I think that was Kate. I think that was a, that was a, that was a, that was a shoot at work though, because like you look mm. at the replays, like what he didn't really hit his knee on anything. Yeah, I, it was so hard, but like I, I thought it was like he was working at too, but then he started throwing the chairs. I was like, he actually might be in legitimate pain. He might be, yeah. but then, but then again, right? Because you got to think: was Roman supposed to come and take him out first, or he was supposed to go? Because if the story is he's going straight for Solo, yeah, he would he would have had to take out both. So you fake the yeah. injury, so he can't like he took himself out, right? Potentially, the story was he took himself out so Roman could come in and take down Solo. Yeah, and, and there was there was talk from people there, but they moved they moved Jacob Fatu out of the way, which also leads me to like maybe he was supposed to go after Roman, and Roman didn't. They they moved him out because he like hurt himself. So we we don't know Maybe. yet. Maybe we'll see what Maybe. happens. Maybe I hope I hope I hope he's okay. But my 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 first thing my first reaction was it's a work. Yeah, who knows? So Roman's back. He's appearing on SmackDown. And oh yeah, by the way, I don't know if you guys are aware of this. Roman has an endorsement deal with the Jordan brand, like yeah. Air what? Jordan brand. Yes. Yeah. The 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 Air Romans are coming soon. Yeah. Roman's com- gonna be great shoes. Roman's signature shoe is coming out later this year. Like I'm not a sneakerhead, but I'm gonna buy the first ever like signature wrestling shoe. I might. Eventually, look. Eventually, look. That's true. That's true. But the because yeah. like the Ro- Roman Superman punch is a good like Air Jordan logo. It's a good play on the Air Jordan. Yeah, logo. I thought he was. I thought that's what he was doing for a long time. So I'm like, oh, you think you're Air Jordan? Yeah. <laughs> so. So we'll we'll see what these shoes are for for Roman Reigns. Uh but let us let us continue yeah. down the road. See what is. Could I wear those in the office? Is that allowed? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, probably to one of the beginnings of the betrayals at in probably, in my opinion, the best match on the card. Damien Priest and Gunther beat the living crap out of each other. Yeah, it was a great match. <laughs> it, was a, it was a very, it was a very good match. Yeah, play I, the soundbite. Uh, yeah, play the meat slapping majesty match. <laughs> Not that one. The I other one. The I other one. I, one. I, I thought I, I, I had that one for uh, Walter. <laughs> it was meat slapping majesty like he literally made gunther bleed yeah well gunther had like the marks on his chest before the match even started like was that from something on tv or is that just he did damien did attack gunther on monday so maybe okay so okay yeah, oh, yeah. it was also kind of funny because um when he was bleeding like the, the the crowd was chanting we can't see for a light but the the, the announcers played it off like yeah <laughs> I mean, they they can't. I mean, we've said that before at shows, and they, like they can't like they 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 can't like address it. <laughs> yeah, they can't they can't acknowledge the fact that production has a light shining <laughs> in the audience's face. Yeah, yeah. But what a story of this match! Like, I forgot how tall, how sil- how similar in size, Damien and Gunther are. And then they got Damien's a ring, huge. and I was like, yo, these dudes are they're huge. Very tall. Yeah, they're. huge. Huge. <laughs> yeah. They're so big. Yeah. Uh, my friend Charles, like, it's like a kaiju fight. I'm like, you're correct. It is like a kaiju yeah. fight. It was a great match. And then Finn with essentially the Prince Devitt betrayal. And again, this kind of pushes the narrative of WWE's been using of consequences to your actions. Yeah. Finn. He did a stare for too long, though. Like, I, <laughs> I liked how Damien uh, hulked up and then got shut down again. Yeah. Uh, but Finn was just standing there, like, <laughs> for like six minutes. <laughs> like, 
And then Damien, the best part is Damien getting out of the pen and immediately going to choke out. Going to choke him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This, this this picture. <laughs> I was just like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, Damien, that was the best selling of his title run was that look in his eye of I'm going to murder you and your children. <laughs> yeah. It was a moment, but apparently we're going to get Prince Devitt back. He is now running Judgment Day. Uh, Good. Yeah. Um, and his whole thing was like, uh, apparently mostly that his thing was like, Damien, Damien got too big of a head when he won a title. And it's, essentially, it's a Dolph Ziggler. It should have been me. Cause it, well, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I saw something like uh, Damien cost Finn the match last year at SummerSlam. Money in the bank. Yeah. Money in the bank. Oh, the cash. Yeah. No, money in the bank. I think Finn. I think Finn and Priest were both in Money in the Bank. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a tag match at last year's SummerSlam. No, no, at the Money in the Bank ladder match when Damien won. Bo- yeah, because they were both in Money in the Bank. They're like, it doesn't matter who wins. Oh, Judgment right. Day okay. Wins. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. That that that's kind so, of the story behind it. I'm I'm also glad that Dom and Liv are also in the new Judgment Day, which. Makes a lot more sense. Oh yeah, we're we're gonna get to, we're gonna get to that yeah. that glorious way of ending. So so the, the the match was solid. Congrats to Gunther. Well deserved. Um, great. Let, let let's grade Damian Priest's title run. His inaugural run. He was fine. Uh, what do you want to go? I like a scale of ten. Uh, eight to F. Eight to F. Yeah. Um, it's not like a premier yeah. title run. It definitely got better at the end. I thought it was weird timing that he loses right before his twenty four comes out. Because from what I've yeah. heard, his twenty four is very well received. Um, well, they want to make him a massive baby face. You got to put sympathy on him, which is fine. And I think it, I think it worked. But uh, yeah. um, his best rival during his run was Gunther. Uh, but I'm giving a solid B plus. B plus. Yeah. I'm giving it a B. I'm giving give it a B minus. There was nothing that was there was nothing wrong, but there was nothing great. But I'd say a solid B plus. Like I said, it got better over time. His his next one is gonna be incredible. Yeah, your first yeah. run is never always. You remember Jericho's first run as champion? No one's yeah, in, especially yeah, no one's, especially with the money especially with the money in the bank briefcase. Yeah, too. no one's inaugural run as champion is going to be like great. Like Not even Austin's Austin's wasn't that good. He lost yeah. it in like three months. <laughs> no one's inaugural run is great unless you're Gunther. He won it in March and he lost it in June. Then he won it back the next night. Yeah. So no one's inaugural run is great unless you're Gunther. Let's listen to these stats. Gunther has been in WWE or Walter Walter Gunther been in WWE since January 12, 2019, which is about 2,030 some odd days total. He's been champion for almost 80% of those, at least. He is the longest reigning NXT UK champion at 870 days. He is the longest reigning Intercontinental champion. He's only won it once for 666 days. That's 1,400 days. Yeah. He is the current world champion. Um, He's spent over 1,530 some odd days as a world champion in WWE, that is a 76% of his WWE career, he's been a champion of something. And he's only been pinned like four times. <laughs> something weird like that. Wow. It's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it is so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So everybody's inaugural run is bad unless you're Gunther. So Gunther might hold, hold this till 2027 at this point. Probably. Yeah. Even though he's going up against Randy and they have great logic for this. Randy is like, My shoulder wasn't down. You didn't actually pin yeah. me at King of the Ring. Yeah. I'm going I'm going to face you. And by the way, you call yourself a living legend. I like to beat up legends. I was like, This works. Yeah, it works. Yeah. I'm about it. And because you know he's not gonna lose, it. especially in Berlin. This this is this is gonna be the greatest thing an Austrian's ever done for the nation of Germany. That's a fact. Which is hysterical because because like Randy called him German and then someone typed me goes, So Gunther's German now? I was like, I guess. <laughs> uh, he's, he's Austrian. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm cause like Randy called him German. I wanted Gunther to be like, actually I'm Austrian, but he didn't correct him. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I guess I guess he's going with he's German. And say, like, well, at this unless, point, what's the difference? Yeah. <laughs> unless he cuts like a like a pro Austrian promo next week. I wouldn't be surprised like, that. Well, he could kind of like not to kind of play up the like smug foreigner kind of trope, mm-hmm. but if he he could cut a whole promo about how like 
Randy's stupid <laughs> for not realizing that he's not in Germany. He's from Austria. You don't know geography, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> it could work. The only thing I was thinking about when, when I was watching this, I was like, wow. Drew McIntyre did all that work to probably get a world title shot and is not getting a world title shot out of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Drew. Speaking of Drew, talk about SummerSlam 97 come back to life. Okay. You have Punk in the pink and black. You have pretty much... Seth Rollins' version of an HBK special guest, and you have Drew kind of dressing like The Undertaker with hints of green. He kind of looked like a Scottish Aquaman. Yeah, <laughs> when he yeah, came, was, he was <laughs> came out. But if you, I swear, if you put both of those matches side by side, it's almost the same match. With a couple, yeah, like, except Ar- except Undertaker didn't win that match. That is also very true. So, but ironically, this is again the other trope of. Brett screwed, Brett screwed Brett, but Punk screwed Punk. Punk screwed Punk. In the- I'm shocked. Shocked. I kind of am Punk too. Punk lost this match. I was gagged. Yeah, I was, I was, I was kind of, I was kind of shocked by this. Um, I thought it was going to lead to something really, really big, but since we have, I bet Drew refused to put him over. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I believe Probably that. Probably after the interview. <laughs> that he- and Punk was just like, "All right, I'll do business. It's fine." <laughs> yeah. Glad he didn't get hurt. I'm glad too. He looked great. Thank God. He looked really, really good. Mm-hmm. But let's go to our resident person who has uh what is what does Punk call a DPS? Deranged Punk Syndrome? DTS? No, he Punk has the Drew DDS, Drew Derangement Syndrome or something. No, no it's Punk. Oh, PDS. PDS, Punk Derangement Syndrome. Punk Derangement Syndrome. Yeah. You're yeah, yes, me. yeah. What is what is, what's your analysis of this match? Um, I loved it. I was really worried. We all were, <laughs> um, to be honest with you. Like the fact that CM Punk lost and I'm still not worried. Is a good sign. Mm-hmm. Like I was saying earlier, that I'm glad that a lot of my predictions were wrong because I wanted to be surprised. And CM Punk losing on his return pay per view match is not what I expected happening in any world. Yeah. Um, but I'm here for it. I heard a rumor this morning that they're setting up Punk and Drew to be in Hell in a Cell at Bad Blood. Maybe. So yes, I still I still think you can do the three of them. Well, I don't want the three of them in any way. Oh, I, I do. honestly, I want it so bad. I don't. I honestly, I want Drew and Seth and Hell in a Cell. Not Drew and Seth. I'm sorry. I want Punk and Seth and Hell in a Cell. I don't want Drew. Well, yeah. It you know this match is great. It, re- it like it, it really take like the match was so good you forget that this is actually literally about a freaking bracelet. It's literally, yeah, I know, right? literally a feud over a bracelet. Uh, the, the funny thing was because I saw I saw Seth pick it up and put it on. I'm like, why would you do that? <laughs> I it. And Punk and Punk played off so well because he put the GTS and then he saw the bracelet. Yeah, he's like, "Fuck, are you doing?" <laughs> that's, that's what she was like, "What are you doing, Seth? What are you doing?" Because <laughs> I I liked how he refed it. He's like, "All right, I'll turn my back." <laughs> Like he was, he was, he was a, an honest and fair referee to both. He didn't really play favorites for the most part. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it was it was good. Um, it was really good. And then I think Punk had the line of the night where he says, "Because Seth said it's not always about you." And Punk, it might not always be about me, it's but it's never, never about, about you. you. And that's oh a bar. Seth <laughs> and I have said that like fifty times since it happened. <laughs> I was just like, fuck. because I like being dramatic, and I'm like, it's about me. <laughs> It was a great line. It was a great line. So it looks like Seth, uh, Drew and Punk are still going to go at it because Seth is too busy getting killed by Bronson Reed on TV. Yeah, I saw this. What the fuck was that about? All right, so I'll explain to you. Bronson Reed. That's funky fresh. Well, so, I'm here for it, actually. Bronson Reed has been. With the ref. <laughs> She's like, ah! Oh, that's Azure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Bronson Reed had gone off the pierce. He's been kind of you know, getting in, trying to get a match from Pierce or getting some sort of opportunity and Pierce keeps bypassing him. So Val, so now he got frustrated and he pulled essentially what he, what, uh, what Braun Breaker did for the last couple of months. So he's, he's doing Braun Breaker. Essentially, except this was after Drew showed up in the crowd and Punk chased after Drew through the crowd. And so Seth was there kind of, Seth also looked like Hangman Adam Page, which I thought was hysterical. 
he had a whole Hangman Adam Page get up. Mm-hmm. It was really freaking Excellent. funny. Um, and so Braun Street came out of nowhere, attacked Seth, and gave him a top rope tsunami six times in a row. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> and all Ow. of those, just like, It's like a video game. And all of the agents just stood there and watched this happen. Including Jason Jordan. He used to be a former wrestler. He literally, like, it was like six or seven times. He would, like, they would tell him, stop, stop, stop. By, by after the sixth time, they finally learned, like, hey, maybe you should roll stuff out of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> it looked rough. Seth, like, I don't know if it was fake blood, but he was spitting up blood. He got sent to a hospital. Yeah, so, that's, fake, that's, 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 that's fake blood. What's up? That's definitely fake blood. It's very phlegmy looking. Yeah, it was very phlegmy looking. So Seth got all messed up. So it looks like Seth's going to help out Bronson. And we, it's possible we could get Drew and Punk again on Hell in a Cell, which would kind of make sense. Also, Hell in a Cell is the last um, pay-per-view in America for the rest of the year. So remember, we have back. Wow. Bash That's when October, ba- November's in Calgary, or so as Triple H laid it out: Bash in Berlin, Bad Blood, yep. Crown Jewel, yep. and uh, Crown Jewel, Crown Jewel, and then Survivor Series War Game is going to be in Vancouver. Vancouver, and there's no, okay. December, there's no December. There is no December, which I thoroughly enjoy. And go straight to Rumble. Go straight to Rumble. Yeah. Dude, yeah. time goes too fast. Yeah. <laughs> this year is going really quickly. It's August, guys. It is August. Oh, Welcome. <laughs> My birthday's in two weeks. Yes, and we're going to have a grand old time. So, yes, Bronson Reed and Seth are looking like they're going to something. I don't know what, but Seth got messed up. It was actually great to see, to be honest with you. It was great, just ridiculous TV. Moving on to how the show began. Dom... Mysterio needs to be studied in extensively for the shit he's been getting Don away with. Mysterio all. needs a therapist. He still needs to be studied. Dr. Dr. Shelby, <laughs> let's go. For the shit he's gotten himself he's gotten himself into. So, again, in, in real life, he has a wife. He also now in k had a girlfriend and a mistress. I feel like not for long. <laughs> yeah. And then the mistress has <laughs> now become the girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> This was a fun match to open up. Dom played his role beautifully. Like, he did a lot yeah. of sneaky stuff. He's like, no, Rhea, not like this. If you, There are people who are deciphering um, this match, breaking down like it's a Kendrick Lamar verse at this mm-hmm. point. Like, so, really? I, someone, I, so. I, so, I watched someone do a video about how he, when he went to go help Rhea when she was... Um, when she got knocked out of the ring, how he just positioned her right in front of the steps so that uh, Lib could run into her. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> and knock her into the steps. Um, one, like the things with the chair, how Dom literally pointed at the chair to Liv and not Rhea when he's talking about like getting the ref's attention was essentially yeah. the same thing. He, I saw that. Yeah, it was the same thing too. he pulled yeah. in, uh, in Saudi when Liv won the title. So it really makes you think that Dom and Liv have been in on this for a very, very long time. Um, the storytelling. She brought him chicken nuggets. Listen, if you bring me chicken nuggies on a PS5, it's going to be hard for me to say no to you. It really is. Yes. (laughs) I don't care who you are. And then just the moment where he picked Liv up and locked lips. And if you look on one angle from some, (laughs) Liv legitimately slipped in a tongue. (laughs) Nice. <laughs> um, I was like, goodness gracious. Sell the gimmick, man. Yeah, it's it's a total sell. Um, I love everything about this. It was a great moment. Even Samantha Irvin on this uh, right by the ring announcer like table. She's like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> like the, it was a kiss. Yeah, it was it was a kiss. I was like, oh, this is this is this is intense. Um. And I do agree, Charles. Ray does need to take a DNA test. This is pure Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, this is pure Eddie shit. <laughs> so Eddie. Yeah, it, it is Eddie. It is. It's just amazing what Dom can get away with. <laughs> it really, really is. This made Rhea a massive baby face. Um, yeah, her and Priest are going to be mm-hmm. over like we're over as baby faces, which is exactly what Triple H wanted. Yeah. That's exactly what he's going to get. 
I thought the match itself was also pretty solid top to bottom, but uh, Rhea did the shoulder spot one or two too many times. Oh, when she like rammed her shoulder and like to put yeah, it back like when in? Yeah, when, mm-hmm. when she first popped it back in, after that, just don't do it anymore. They defer it because she did it twice. Yeah. <laughs> it's <was> like, <laughs> it, it's not it, real. I <laughs> mean, no, it is because sometimes you can pop your shoulder in and pop back out if it's really that loose. You know, I thought when she ran into the announce table, I was like, I don't know if that's the right direction to pop your shoulder back in, but okay, we'll go with it. <laughs> that's going to work. Yeah. <laughs> it, and Michael Cole was like, I've never seen anything like this. And I think someone was just like, oh, Finn Balor did it. Finn never <laughs> popped his shoulder back in, I believe. No, he didn't do it. He he did. He dislocated his shoulder at SummerSlam against Seth. He he did pop. They have it on camera. They popped it back in. Oh, okay. I, oh. I, I remember being there. I don't remember seeing him get it popped back in. No, he he did it himself. Like, <laughs> he didn't do it like on hard cam or whatever, but there was a shot of him putting it back in. Yeah, it's it, unfortunately it's a necessity when you dislocate your. When yeah. you have to yeah. pop it back in immediately. Yeah, so we, so we can finish the match. He is a is there's like a shot of him popping it back in. Michael Cole's like, I've never seen anything like this, but yes, you have. I mean, not on hard cam, Michael, but you've seen it. <laughs> yeah, uh, not not on commentary. Yeah, you know, we never talked about it on commentary. Yeah. Uh, Kay, what is your what is your assessment of Dom Mysterio and his lifestyle that he lives right now? Well, I'm on, I'm like dicking around on Instagram, and apparently she took him for chicken tenders after. Oh, you didn't fun. see the you <laughs> didn't see the um you didn't see the photo he, he posted. I'm looking at it right now with the caption. She gets me. Thank you, and it's him with three plates of ten. He's just like ah. <laughs> yes, I gotta look this up. <laughs> it's in it's in our uh, Discord. I think it's in our tip of the crown. Probably because uh, fucking Fritz is always, always, Honest, always nails it. Yeah. I missed almost everything that happens in the Discord. Like, I didn't know. Yeah, Dom's that fi- we were... profile picture for this thing is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty crazy. So there, because I did put like. The... <laughs> she gets me. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Those look like damn good nuggets, too. They, they're, they're, yeah. yeah, they're chicken fingers. They're tendies. Yeah, they're tendies. Uh, somebody did tweet, and I put this in our tip of the crown, and said that thought Don was going to turn on the woman who got him 50 nuggets and a PS5, and it's a meme that says, she. <laughs> <laughs> she. <laughs> it was great. Summer Sam was just a hot show. You know how hot of a show it was? The Hawk Tua girl was in the crowd. And really? No one, and no one cared. Yeah, yeah, she was. She actually had good seats. There's a video of her watching uh, watching Rhea and Liv. And at one point, I'll know you agree with me, Kay. I was like, wow, this is really sapphic really quickly. When they were crawling, oh my when they were crawling to each other, I was like, what is going on? Chef's <laughs> um, kiss. Yeah. No, but there, the Hawk to her girl, there's a video of her watching like Rhea and Liv uh, during the middle of the match. She goes, I think I'm into women's wrestling now. I go, yeah, you are. I was like, we're all in the women's wrestling. Great. <laughs> yeah, that's a hot. Also, before we continue, what do we think of their ref cam experiment? Fucking hate I it. Like it. Never do it again. It, I like. I like. Seth didn't even use it for the entire match. I think he threw it off. Yeah, dumb or something. Don't like it. It wasn't the worst. I'm just surprised they only like used it. it for several matches. I think it's interesting if they if they use it as like a relevant plot point. Fair, Damn. yeah. Liv, those like, are not jean shorts. Jesus Christ! Like, let's bring out the body cam to kind of like <laughs> let's look at the footage. It just <laughs> yeah. looked so weird when I first saw it. I was like, it's for a second. I was like, that looks like a band aid on an ear, and I don't want to make the joke, but this is what it looks like to me. I was like, what is that? I'm like, oh, it's a ref cam. I'm like. Of all the places to put the camera, <laughs> why on the ear? Like, that's got to be so uncomfortable. Where else would they put it? Collar? It's hard. You can't keep that steady, though. You could give them those, like, glasses in the movies that they put a camera in. Or, yeah, doesn't Snapchat have, like, a pair of glasses with, like, Ray-Ban, with, like, Ray-Bans that they do those for? Can you imagine so. refs with glasses in the ring? God. <laughs> they would be broken look, so look, look, quickly. Look, like the Dudleys. <laughs> They'd be broken so quickly. Um, the yeah. the best part of rep cam, I think, is when Seth wore it during his entrance. I thought that was a cool shot. Yeah, me too. When he was walking to the it. when he's walking to uh, the ring with the with the rep cam on, I was like, oh, that's a cool shot. I don't know. It's it's a weird application, but I was like, it could work. 
Like, it could work, but I don't know. But all I know is that apparently Liv and Liv and, Liv and Dom work ridiculously well. I, we're still waiting for explanation for how long they've been doing this. But it seems like forever. And also, I don't know if it's legit or not, but are we calling, because I've heard people call, call them this lately, are we calling Damien and Rhea the Terror Twins now? Yes. The Terror Twins? Terror oh, Twins. I don't like it. It's gothy and They call themselves. They call themselves that. Oh, okay, They're, it's very gothy and emo. Um, but I, I, I kind of dig it. I think it's cute. Yeah, it works. It, it works for them, and that's all that matters. Um, so we have Terror Twins versus Judgment Day, and who knows? He's the Batman to my Catwoman, the Ken to my Barbie, the Joker to my Harley, the Clyde to my Bonnie. Always my hero, my Daddy Dom. Is that what she posted? Goodbye. That's what she posted. Goodbye. <laughs> I love it. Shut I love it. it down. I love so it. Good. <laughs> I love that so much. Almost as much as I love everybody making the comparison of Damien Priest to Dominic Toretto. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's talked about family way too much. People are like, "Are you sure you weren't cast in a Fast and Furious movie?" <laughs> so, pick, pick you for what, Dory? Anyhow, as we move on, again, she had a very awesome performance, and I think my favorite Nia Jax performance ever. She looked amazing against against Bailey um, in her championship win, which is kind of kind of saw it coming. We didn't know how it was going to be executed. But I thought it was executed really well, especially the fact that I guess Bailey's been lifting because she walked Nia to the middle of the ring and power bombed her. Yeah, this was, <laughs> the, this was the best match of Nia's career. Absolutely, Definitely. yeah, <laughs> definitely, yeah. Match was great, especially the, the finish. Yeah, when she just screamed mm-hmm. to the title and then just jumped on. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it, I popped. I was very happy for her, yeah. and I, I like the, the 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 fake cash in mm-hmm. attempt to distract Bailey to get the win. Very smart. smart. It was very good writing, smart. Good writing, good booking. It was very smart. And when she got a good pop, Tiffy booked it to the ring. And, like, I, I knew she wasn't going to catch it. I was like, you just got this briefcase yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> like, they just put it on the shop. We're not wasting the sales of that ridiculous briefcase with a freaking strap. Kay, did you see the strap on this briefcase? Yeah. So cute. Stop it's stupid. it. Stop it's it, so Kay. stupid. Stop. I love, I love so the post show. It's like, yeah, it's it's uh it's it's an homage to my first Chanel bag. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. It's so good. So are you telling me, Kay, that you want a Tiffy Time briefcase? Let me see how much is it. I actually don't know how much it is. I know they put it on sale. I'm a I'm Probably no, I know it's on the fifty. I'm gonna guess I'm gonna guess one fifty. One fifty sounds good. I'm gonna uh, pre-order now. One hundred. One one twenty nine ninety nine. Right in the middle. God damn it. Right in the middle. All <laughs> right. All right. It's the strap. I it call- should be one. It should be one. It should be one fifty. But all right. It's a strap. I- <laughs> she also has a Tiffy Time slap bracelet that looks like the women's title, but like with TS in the middle. Interesting. Slap bracelets yeah. can still be a thing. Can still. This is cute. <laughs> Maybe for your birthday, Kay, we'll get you we'll get you a Tiffy Time briefcase with a strap. <laughs> carry it around. Oh, no. Carry it around all the time. I mean, it's not bad. That would look cute on the subway. What's up? That would be cute on the subway. Maybe, I guess. Um, but no, Naya looked fantastic. You know what it was for me, Will? Naya actually... Tell me. She actually looked legitimately like a world beater. Like, she destroyed Bailey at the end. Power bombed her twice, yeah. sat on her once, popped right back up, sat on her again. And yeah. then the Yoko's gonna pose. I was like, that's how you book Nia Jax now. And Bailey came out with tassels. It was so close to Hugger Bailey. It was it's it's a Hugger Bailey mixed with Macho Man. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was like, are we getting a chain soon? Like what's going on? Step into a slim gym. Dig it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about the slip chip. We can move from that, and we're done talking about Nia. But I'm happy for her. I'm happy to. So, see- can, we, can we talk about the manscaped ad first of all with Otis? I was so uncomfortable. Oh my god, it was so <laughs> funny! Like, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> so uncomfortable. <laughs> first of all, yeah. it's manscaped for facial products. I go, that's not what made manscaped famous, but okay. <laughs> Yeah, Manscaped is like for your asshole. 
yes, and for your pubic area. And I think they were kind of teasing that because he was just around his stomach, and they were all just staring at him like, why are we doing yeah, this? Yeah, they're like, we got to watch him shave his junk. He's close to his belly. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what are we doing? Oh, yeah, perfect shave, yeah. It only works because it's Otis. <laughs> it can, does. Can pull it does. That off. I'm like, who is, because it, it was the Alpha Cameron. Who are the other two? Um, Was it New Day? Was New Day there? It was New Day. It was. It should have been pretty deadly. First of all, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Pretty deadly would have killed that segment. Yeah, but yeah, there was. I was like, wow, this is really uncomfortable. <laughs> but I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> I guess it worked. Um, but yeah, no. Congratulations, Nia. She got a new custom crown, which I thought was pretty interesting. That, yeah. that she also I, wore. I like Nia's process. crown. I never want to ever see Cody Rhodes wear that mask again. I want him to wear the mask all the freaking time. I hated it. I love it. I want to collect it if you had it on sale. We didn't. We also didn't talk about Cody retiring Pharaoh because uh, that was Pharaoh's last ride on the on the on the road. So he's he's putting Pharaoh. Pharaoh's gonna be home permanently because we're never seeing Pharaoh again. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why it was a big All thing. Right. Bye, Kay. Are you leaving? Bye, all of you. Are you leaving? Kay? Yes. Bye. Yeah. Oh. Check the Discord, Ricky. Oh. oh. Well, Kay is leaving. Bye, Kay. Yeah. Kay. Kay has to take care of business. So thank you, Kay. We'll see you next week. Oh, boy. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Kay. We will see you next week. Uh, so let's move on. So it's it's just us men here. <laughs> but yeah, no. Nye was good. Uh, now we can really talk about Dom and Nye. <laughs> <laughs> Is Dom's like Dom's living a Dom's living a life that every every dude wishes they could live. Yeah, dude, he's, he's gonna it's gonna make a great edge and leader. I take I take back what I said last week would be Finn be better. Although I think it'd be really funny if Finn and Liv just started making out too. <laughs> just they become a throuple. Yeah, they become a throuple. <laughs> and then and then like and then Carlita goes, I'm married. And then JD <laughs> tries and lives like ew. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder why JD is in judgment there because like nothing good happens to him ever. He's there to take bumps, dude. Seriously. He's there to take bumps. <laughs> he is there to take bumps. But no, I I'm again I'm very happy for Naya. I think she's gonna eat this up. She's on a fantastic run. She yes. she looks in great shape. Oh um, yeah, she does. And like her in-ring work was so good with Bailey. Like so good. And they, they coordinated a good match. Now, I'm interested to see how her development of Tiffy, how she's going to help develop Tiffy when yeah. Tiffy eventually turns on her or something like that. Um, but all hell Queen Nye. And I hope, I hope she gets so ridiculous with that crown that she wears it all the time. Like she wore it during the press. <laughs> <laughs> just wore it at random points. Like she, she goes on commentary on SmackDown and just has it on her head. <laughs> just blocking people from everything. Uh, but speaking of snapping into a Slim Jim, when is that Slim Jim sponsorship with LA Knight going to end? Because he got it last year at SummerSlam, and Slim Jim sponsored his match this time at SummerSlam. Yeah. I mean, him and Bianca have had that commercial out for a while. It's been a year. It's been, yeah, it has been it's a year. It's been a year. So, um, this was also a really good match. It was. I think this was the best night of the best match of LA Knight's career as well. Yeah. From what I've seen, I didn't, I didn't watch any stuff as JD Drake or whatever he was in um, TNA. Yeah, Eli Drake. Eli Drake, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, Eli Drake. It was like JD Drake. I was so, like, I don't know if we didn't have a JD Drake. Um, no, he was good. It was a fun match. Logan Paul bringing up MGK, I was like, why? But I was like, okay, they're both in Cleveland, I guess. <laughs> and they're both douchebags. Yeah, I was like, and like MGK had been making like kind of a kind of a turnaround. And I was like, now he showed up with Logan Paul. I was like, oh my God. And... I hate to say it every time. I, I feel like I say this often in the past couple of years. Logan Paul's just like becoming really good at wrestling. He's a great wrestler. <laughs> the springboard, the top rope springboard moonsault. I was like, how? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great, great selling. He gets real sweaty. <laughs> he um, does get really sweaty. I, I'm a little sick of the brass knucks. Yeah, it's just a gimmick. He uses it better than, yeah, the, uh, it's, it's, than the dynamite diamond ring. True, I guess. Yeah, it is. It is his gimmick. Um, good for LA Knight. I don't believe that WWE called an audible because of Logan Paul's recent contract with the Olympics. No, I think this was the uh, plan all along. This, this was always the plan. I yeah. think it's the right call. LA Knight needed something. The announcer said on his way down, "This is make or break for LA Knight," and they finally made him. Yeah. So no, yeah. it's a great. It's a great photo right there too. It was one of those things where, like, if he doesn't win this, what do you do with him? 
Exactly. You know, he had to win. I, I like how he missed on his first attempt to break the window on, on the prime <laughs> car. Yeah. He was like, <laughs> oh, oh, got to do it hard. <laughs> Just broke it again. <laughs> he, he, hit, he hit the frame, not the glass. <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you as surprised as me that the prime car isn't a Cybertruck? It should be a Cybertruck. It truck, should be a Cybertruck. I was like, why is this Dude, not a those Cybertruck? those Cybertrucks are fucking ugly. I've, I've seen four of them in the wild. I've seen one out in the wild. I'm like, why would you buy this? Like, this looks There's cool. a town. There's a township in New Jersey with had, like, the, the police cruisers or t- Cybertrucks. Why? <laughs> it's so weird. I don't know. It's so weird. I don't know, dude. I, I don't. <laughs> I mean, once everyone has one, you'd be like, okay, it's fine. But it just, it looks... It looks like a Lego. <laughs> it looks like it's something out of Minecraft. <laughs> Minecraft. Yeah. That's what I was going for. Yeah. Something out of Minecraft. Like Elon is just such a fucking troll, and sometimes <laughs> I really enjoy it, and sometimes I'm like, you're such a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this looks disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. But back to this match. This match was great. LA Knight looked awesome. He, I've never seen someone counter the Buckshot Lariat like that. Like that finish yeah. was fantastic. Yeah, it was, it was a it was a great finish. Yeah, it was an absolute great finish. baller finish. And this I think it's a good move for LA Knight. I think Logan Paul takes some time off, I'm assuming. Yeah, probably till like Rumble Mania season. Something like that. Um, yeah. He had a good Also, run. they 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 did a good job of explaining how LA Knight was able to recover so quickly from the brass knucks. Because it was a, it was up top a short jab, not like a full not a lot of full hit, yeah. Not not a full hit. Yeah. So Good save. It's a good save. Yeah, good, it's a good save. It was a good save. <laughs> Everything in kayfabe made sense. Fred says the the Tesla Cybertruck looks like Gran Turismo One with PS One graphics. <laughs> God damn! I mean, he's right though. He is right. <laughs> it's such a bad looking truck. It's so horrible. But yeah, I think Logan Paul takes some time off, uh, which is fine. He had a fine run as the United States champion. He he did what he was supposed to do, and he got LA Knight over. So let's see what LA Knight does with it uh, when he's on SmackDown. Last but not least. Also, again, if he doesn't win it now, what do you do with him? Braun Breaker. Essentially, this was a blink and you missed it match. Short. <laughs> yeah. It was a short match. Short to the point. You knew what was going to happen because you can't do the same match twice. And that's what they did. And he, he took care of Sammy. Again, he looks phenomenal. He shouldn't be able to do the things he does at his size. Like He's really fast. He's really fast. He's crazy. Really ap- agile. Athletic. The- I love the Breckensteiner, too. It's such a great name. Yeah. Yeah, it's literally the Frankensteiner, but he just changes to the Breckensteiner. Yeah. Yep. It, it, he does it exactly like his Uncle Scott. Like, yep. <laughs> like picture perfect. Um, and he won. He's good. He was very humble about it. He, like, I feel like I feel like he forgot he was supposed to be like a heel because he was so happy he won. Uh, I think it's it's fine. Yeah. His first major title mm-hmm. on the main roster. It's it's fine to show a human side in a human moment. Yeah, he 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 thanks Sami Zayn, which is you never real rarely ever see on and like even like even like a post show as a heel. Yeah, as yeah, a heel, as a heel in the post show. Yeah, yeah, it was very humble. Yeah, he was very humble. Yeah, like I feel like he's, Naya too. Yeah. Naya was also very humble. It's, I don't. Know, how do you? What do you? What, what's your take on those press conferences, post show things where? Do you like it when they show their regular human side? Do you like it when they're kind of more in character? Ellie Knight was just a dick all around in that press conference. <laughs> well, then so was Punk walking by too, and he was like, "What do you <laughs> like?" I yeah. I like. I feel like a lot of the times it depends on the person and what they're trying to do. Like, so for instance, like when if you're a heel, I think it should always be in character. I know, but you had two heels. Like, Nia was humble, and so was kind of, you know, uh, Braun Breaker. But, like, when you get to a moment like WrestleMania Night 1 with with um, with um Roman Reigns, remember? Yeah. And, you know, and... He's like, I don't want to fucking be here. Just make this... B- get out. Yeah. Fuck out of here. I think, yeah. I, think he, I think he was going to be a little bit of half and half, and then he turned it on when someone, like, kind of legitimately disrespected the process. <laughs> yeah. You know? But I, I do like more of the 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 more like human side of it because like at the end of the day, we all know it's a show like that. Like there's nothing like the Kern's been Kern was pulled out years ago for for all got took down and replaced. Exactly. Took him down and thrown out years. Yeah. A long time. You know, and you know, they do the entertainment side for forever. And now we got to do kind of the sports side. Like for the first time in wrestling, AEW and WWE, I think collectively they finally figured out the sports side of sports entertainment. 
Like this is mm. kind of a sports side of it. You know, you have yeah. you have people asking questions. You get their kind of responses and things like that. So I, I like kind of integration. It makes it feel more like something I'd watch in the NFL or like the NBA. You know, I, I like I like how WWE has evolved their their post show process, where it's like you talk to the you talk to the post show team. Sometimes people on the, sometimes they'll show up, like people from the from the event will show up on the panel or will show up on the press room. So they they've done, they've done like the variety, but overall for like the performers, I like seeing the more humanistic side. And see about it, see how they answer stuff. Yeah. I, I didn't mind Nia Jax's answers because it, it did feel very genuine. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like I'm so used to seeing her as a heel. Mm. It's hard to it switch. A, it's it's hard, yeah. It, I think I would have preferred her to be a little more heelish. I think it could also depend on the question too. Yeah. Like the vibe the vibe of the interview. Yeah. Like Braun being humble, because that wasn't in a press conference, that was more of like a backstage interview or was he at the desk? He was, at, he, the desk. he was at the desk, yeah. At the desk, right? Yeah. So I go I go back and forth. Like I I go I go back and forth. I think you make a very good point with the sports side of sports entertainment. Yeah. And in a human moment too, it's good to be human in a human moment. <laughs> yes, um, usually. <laughs> and you're not in front of a live crowd. No. Like in front of a live crowd, you're always in character, you're in front of press. Yeah. Or what we believe to be his press. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little different. Fucking who's who's that old guy? Bill Apter. Bill Apter, what's what's the deal with him? He's been around for ages, he's been covering stuff. Everybody I, in the business knows him. Right. So it's okay. So there's no like heat or anything. It's just like a, oh you were again. Yeah, exactly. It's one of those things like everybody knows, like, oh, you're here again, you know. So. Like Triple H was like, Yeah, you you were lying back in like the nineties. <laughs> 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 and he was like, Well, <laughs> Just making shit up. <laughs> I think he, I think did he did he like Mike check like pre PWI that one time? He's like, yeah, you work for PWI. <laughs> something like yeah, that. yeah, it's something ridiculous. <laughs> so I, I like I like I like the pressers. Um, yeah, I know we were saying that EW like shouldn't do them anymore, but no, I think WWE definitely stole that from AEW and just did it right. And they just I'm kind of perfected it to begin with. Yeah, you know what I think because I think what worked well for WWE is that they leaned into the IWC in this aspect. They're like, "Hey, you're a popular person in the IWC. You post about our content all the time. Want to come to the show? Want to be a part of the press? Like, you know, the more popular podcasters. Some of them have been on our show. Issa, those wrestling and wrestling girls. girls. Yeah, yeah, they were there. They're they're always there. Denise Salcedo. Denise Salcedo for better or worse. Yeah, for better or worse. Yes, Denise Salcedo. Whoever she represents that day, because she represents like five fucking companies. Um. And and other names, so they 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 did a good mixture of hey, these are like regular fans who also kind of like talk about our content and actual people from like the um actual people from the media, like Bleach Reports there a lot of the time. Sports Illustrated yeah. is there a lot of the time. So yeah. they did they did yeah. a good they did a good mixture of like, hey, these are kind of amateurs or these are professionals. And I think everybody kind of learns like one can learn from the other and vice versa in those in those moments. Some of them some of them ask really stupid questions. Some of them though. do ask really stupid questions. So it's one of those things where it's, sometimes it's trial by fire. That is my one gripe a lot of the time with the um with some of the questions that are asked during the during the uh during the pressers after or media scrums if you want to call it, is that Sometimes they'll just ask questions that are not related to what just occurred. How are you feeling after this monument? <laughs> I feel great. What you say. Like- it's one of my dad's gripes with stuff too. My dad was my dad was like, if I was a personal athlete, you couldn't you couldn't interview me after a loss. <laughs> like you'll get the worst yeah, side no, of me. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but it's one of those things where like, hey, if we just had SummerSlam, why don't we stay on top about things at SummerSlam? I can understand asking Triple H different things. Because he's head of creative, yeah. he has a better idea of where things are going. Um, but for like the performers, like why would you ask something about something that happened like a week before or something like that? Ask about what happened in the match, you know, or what happened on the show for them. You know, things like that. that's that's my only gripe with the pressures. But then again, when you're mixing amateur interviewers with professional interviewers, you're gonna you're gonna get a, a mixed bag. Yeah, and you gotta have you gotta have a list of questions because you wanna make sure that the question could have gotten asked or yeah, you know, it's easy for me to be a Monday Night Quarterback because what the fuck would I ask? I don't even know. I have no idea what I would ask. Like, what, what would I ask LA Knight? Yo, are you gonna are you gonna go back to acting this night? <laughs> <laughs> you gonna go back to soap operas? I loved you in Brooklyn Nine Nine. <laughs> right? like, like, it's hard. It's 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 legitimately hard coming up with questions like that because you don't even know if you're gonna get called on, right? Yeah, so, and you're in the moment, you don't want to fucking blow it, like. 
a hard job. Yeah, it, it's a hard it, job. It really is hard. Um, I, I like I've always I kind of always had the wanted to always want to be those people when they start when you when we first realized like oh we're opening up to like people like us and then I was like ah and then like you get the you they kind of usher you out before the end of the show. They, yeah. they put you in the they put you in the press room bef- like right as the main events happening. I'm like I don't want to do that. Yeah, you don't you don't get to actually enjoy the show. Yeah. <laughs> you get to get you get to watch the main event in the press room on TV. Yeah, and I'm like <laughs> ah, but I was just there in the press box. <laughs> like, and you know they definitely uh, they definitely. I wonder, like, you think Denise Salcedo? What 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 did she have to pay for? What's up? Like, what do you think the press people like Denise Salcedo, Bill Opter? What do you think they had to pay for? Uh, Flights, hotels, probably. Probably flight and hotel. I would. I, okay. I. I doubt WWE covers their travel expenses. I feel like they get press pass, they get it mailed to them, and they have to, you know, find their way there. Yeah, interesting. Probably. Yeah, I don't. Probably. I don't. I don't foresee WWE pulling out the red carpet for them. No, or if anything, like if it's uh, if it's PWI, they would pay. Yeah, the company PWI would pay. Yeah, it's broadcast. one of those things where like they get yeah. they get like vetted as a member of the press or whatever. They get invited by WWE, but WWE like you know provides them a ticket, press box, but they don't like they don't get anything else. Like they gotta yeah yeah get their way there. Which honestly, that's fine by me. See, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> it's fine by me. I'd be cool with it. I mean, you never know who you're gonna bump heads with in the press room. Yeah, you know. So there's that. But yes. And I also, by the way, back to back to Bronson, Bron Breaker. It was also cool to have, you know, the Steiners there in the in the suite when when he won. Yeah. And they had a vi- yeah, really they cool. had a video on on them when when he won and everything, too. They're just like really nice. They're really happy old men. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was cool. So that that's another thing. Like, like, you know, there's going to be a lot of kids now that are going to be children of legendary performers like Santino's daughter is in NXT Victoria's daughter is in NXT like there's a yeah. lot of second third fourth generation people that are be coming up now and so to have that that legend suite accessible to them at all like during those big events I think that's pretty freaking cool yeah it's cool I like it yeah I, I like it a lot um and that's pretty much the show because honestly SummerSlam was freaking awesome well I know you said privately that it's like a 10 out of 10 for you show yeah, I'm gonna go back. I mean, it's it's a nine and a half. What made was it the ref cam that was nine that made it took away the half point? That the ref the ref cam, yes. And then the main event, uh Bloodline Rules. The gimmick the gimmick worked for WrestleMania. This yeah. one there are I think there are other ways. I mean, it's just it's just replacing a ref bump, you know? Yeah. Instead of doing a ref bump that's gonna make it part of the match. Mm-hmm. And it just kind of felt like, okay, you're going back to the thing you already did and it wasn't as good. Yeah, there's there 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 are different ways they could have done it. Yeah. But um, it got the desired result. Like like if I think if Cody could have won clean and then Roman comes in for the save, if they beat him down afterwards, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's like these shenanigans could have been done after the match, you know. Yeah. So that's just that's just nitpicking. But yeah, ref cam and then the main event was just like it wasn't you know you got you're gonna you're gonna run it back and make sure it's better. Yeah. So, but nine and a half, very, very strong. I also would have liked to see Sammy and Braun go a little bit l- longer, but whatever. Yeah. I thought I thought the, the main points hit. Surprises were good. Storytelling all up and down. You see Dave Meltzer's post of like he had to he had to really that was such try a shit hard. Post. <laughs> yeah, he had to try really hard. He's he's took a really long way of saying yeah, I liked the show, but I didn't want I didn't want to like it. I didn't want to like it, but I liked it. Here's what I'm gonna have to say about it. Yeah. It's like everything was an angle. I'm like yeah, Dave, it's fucking wrestling. <laughs> Everything's an angle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's why we do these shows. But like, it was for the first time in a he's like, while. Well, the, he's like, the wrestling might not have been world class. But what do you mean the wrestling wasn't world class? You see what Logan Paul did? Logan wrestling was fucking awesome. Like, what do you mean? Barely <laughs> carried Nia across the ring and power bombed her. Yeah, like the wrestling itself was up to par with AEW wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Except, except the difference is WWE sells. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the card was paced so well. Oh, so the, great, great uh, se- setting. Seven up. matches. Everything m- was placed right. The match lengths were, for the most part, correct. Yeah. Like, it, it. you got the breaks. You got the come downs. One thing I did against Peacock was in the replay, they cut out the video packages. So do you, right? have, do you have, like, the, the top tier package or not? Yeah, I, I, got, I got the premium. So like, Do you have premium or premium live, plus? I, would, I think it's premium plus. I don't know. It's like 10 bucks. 
you probably have premium because premium 12 bucks i don't know the the higher tier one they play the video packages during the commercial breaks the lower tier ones you just get like these random ads no when i'm when i'm watching live i get the video package okay so you do have the you do have the bigger yes, one yes. okay it's but for for on the replay mm. they what what would it be an ad break or the or the video package break they, they just cut it all together oh that's weird and they so they go from michael cole saying or Corey, Corey Graves saying, if you have Peacock Plus, you get the video package. If not, you get commercials. And then it goes straight to the entrance music. Oh, that's that's very weird. Yeah, I don't like it. But that's just uh, that's, that's a Peacock thing. But yeah, yeah a- solid, solid nine and a half. I enjoyed this card up and down. Yeah, everything made sense. That was a great part about it. Yeah. Everything made sense. Yeah. And it was a great pivot from the summer story. And now we're going to walk into the fall and bash in yep. Berlin. It is it's one of the best summer slams I've ever seen. And I've been to like five of them. It was, a, it was a big reset. You know, it's a great it was reset. funny. The four, t- four, four titles that changed hands at WrestleMania all changed hands at SummerSlam. Is that legit? Well, good. That the four titles that the four titles that changed hands on SummerSlam was the four was four, one of the four other titles that were won at WrestleMania. That's true. Okay. Yeah. Bailey Bailey won at Mania. Uh, Logan well, Logan Paul retained. Logan Paul retained. Um, so Sammy won at Mania. Sammy won at Mania. Logan Paul. Uh, sorry. Logan. Blah, blah, Logan retained. Can't talk. Sammy won at Mania. Bailey won at Mania. Yeah, Logan retained. Um, Damien won at Mania. And Damien won at Mania, yeah. And then what was the fourth one? Did you have... So we talked about Sammy, Logan, was, Nia. What was the other fourth? Well, we said Nia. Bailey. Yeah, we said Bailey. Bailey. Bailey won. So yeah, so maybe three of them. Yeah, Whatever. three of Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's a good hard... Yeah. It's a good, good reset. I, yeah. I, I like... Logan, yeah, Logan retained at Mania because yeah. he won at... Where, where did he win it? He won before Mania. I forgot. I forgot. Yeah, I don't remember either. It feels like it was eons ago. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It was a long time Eons-y. ago. <laughs> it feels like it was eons ago. Uh, Are you, 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 you giving it a 10? I don't know if I'm going to give it a 10. I don't know. You know what it is? It was Crown Jewel. Thank you, Taquan. Um, you know what it is? Because, so, like, my my standard for 10 is, like, WrestleMania 40 now. Okay, like, fair. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But I'll give it a 9. I'll give it a 9. nine. Yeah. I'm a little concerned for next year being two nights. I don't two know years. how two years. I don't know how they could have stretched this SummerSlam to be two nights. That's a good part. You got tag matches, okay. They didn't we didn't had we had no tag matches. I'm saying, but you, you would have had tag matches. Yeah. You would have had two tag matches. You would have had maybe the women's tag matches, but like how else would you possibly fill? Because there's not enough TV programming right now to cover Two nights? Two nights. Unless it's like a two hour, two night, both nights. Or you three and three? Three three hours, both nights, maybe? Yeah, because what? Last night, last summer, summer was what, four? About four. Four, four and change? Yeah, so if you do like two and a half, one night, and two and a half, whatever night, I think it'll be fine. That would work. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. Try and stretch another hour of matches. Yeah. Maybe another performance, some shenanigans. Yeah. The WWE also likes to do talking segments mm-hmm. or backstage other interviews, things. ads. Yeah. You know. Other things to kind of break it up a little bit. Yeah. And spend, spare some time. But I think a concise SummerSlam is one night. Like this would not be this would not be a nine, nine and a half if it was two nights, this card. Probably not, because you'll have other stuff like in between these key matches. Yeah, it would be like a seven and a half to eight and a half. Yeah. So it's it, we still have a couple more years to figure to figure out what they're gonna do. They still haven't announced SummerSlam for next year, so we'll see. But like it keeps growing. So like if they find a way to fill out SummerSlam, fill out more than they did at Cleveland Brown Stadium, maybe maybe there is some, you know, a good sign for, for Minnesota in twenty twenty six. Mm-hmm. We'll see. I'm excited for it. I mean and Triple H has said, hey, this the end of the year is gonna be really crazy too. So I have no idea what's what he's gonna have planned, but it's gonna be Going to be very, very interesting stuff. Uh, but on that note, let's get the hell out of here. Shall we, sir? One button. Yeah, where is One it? One button work. There, there it is. is. I got there it. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 385, Tribal B, because Roman came back as the original 
tribal chief and laid down the law to the rest of his family. Although The Rock may have something to say about being the original tribal chief. I am your host, King Ricky Rose, the tribal chief of this podcast. You can find me on Ambassador Biggs across all social media outlets, B-I-G-Z, Ambassador Biggs, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, some people's DMs, less people's text messages. Oh yeah, and threads too, I guess, as well. Uh, B-I-G-Z, Ambassador Biggs. Find King of the Kings of the Rings podcast at K-O-T-R underscore podcast across all social media outlets. The links all about it in the description below. If you are listening to us, make sure you're listening to us on Wrestle Attic Radio, the cure for the Common Wrestling Podcast, and follow Wrestle Attic Radio socials at Addict underscore Wrestle on Twitter and at Wrestle Attic Radio, all one word, everywhere else. The links to all of that are also in the description below, along with links to our pretty, pretty freaking awesome merchandise um, and our Discord family as well. Appreciate our Discord family. Our Discord family is really freaking fun. I'm not going to lie to you. I love our Discord. Yeah. Our Discord <laughs> is so much fun. It is, it is ridiculous. I, it, was, it was so hard for me to stay off because I was on vacation last year. It was so hard <laughs> for me to stay off Discord all day Saturday, all day Sunday until I got home. Seriously. It was... It was hard, but I did it. I didn't, I didn't check Facebook. I didn't check Bleach Report. I, I went to SummerSlam spoiler free. Nice. Very, very nice. Well, Tara Shock is on you. Yeah. Um, Ricky might be the tribal chief, but I am the OTC. I am the original <laughs> tribal chief. It's me. It's me. It's Willie T. And if you want to find us, we will be at Fanatics Fest. Look at this ticket, Ricky. Look how fucking ridiculous this I thing love, is. I'm going to keep it, too. I keep all I, I keep yeah, my of course. It's, stuff. It's the Brooklyn Bridge, a skeleton. I think I get a good. Yeah, it's a skeleton <laughs> dunking on a flaming hoop above a taxi cab. That is so NBA jam. I love it. <laughs> yeah, right? It's going to be a good time. If if you're going to be there, find us. All three kings uh, will be there. Yes. I guess we can call K a king. Why is K a king? K is a king. Yeah, K- king K. K is a king. King K. So we will all be there. We'll be in line. We'll be watching panels. So come say hi hang out with us and it's it's gonna be a great time hope to see you all there i'm very excited for it when we come back next week folks uh we're gonna have to start planning for all in and talking about that and everything that's going oh, we talk with shane and aew either, it, so i guess we'll, 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 we'll yeah we'll we'll pull that card we'll end up talking about that we're we'll gonna continue to fall out uh from summer sam and the return of the original tribal chief roman reigns and hopefully he drops his shoes because like literally if his shoes drop we are going to critique these shoes on air Whenever they come out, I'm not a shoe head at all. I don't know anything about shoes, but we're we're gonna talk about these shoes. I I can judge how they look. We're gonna talk. The colors are nice. It's definitely (laughs) gonna be black and red. So, and I hope they have like a version where they have light up sneakers. (laughs) Maybe if Naomi gets a signature (laughs) shoe, maybe. So, until next week, folks. (laughs) Goodbye. Good night. We'll see you soon. And oh yeah, by the way, some person who should never get their own shoes is Slack because fuck you, Slack. See you next week. This has been a Wrestle Attic Radio branded podcast.